In this lecture, we're going to discuss DNA-based tissue typing. At the end of the lecture, you should be able to describe the structure of the MHC locus that encodes the HLA antigens. Explain the role of these antigens in tissue engraftment and rejection. Identify and explain HLA allele nomenclature. Describe the laboratory methods used to identify HLA antigens by serology testing. And describe the DNA-based testing methods that are used for the identification of HLA antigens. The major histocompatibility complex, or MHC, is a group of genes located on the short arm of chromosome 6. The MHC gene products are called human leukocyte antigens, or HLA. When a transplant is performed, compatibility of the HLA of the organ donor and the recipient increases the chance for a successful engraftment. Graft versus host disease, or GVHD, occurs when immunocompetent cells in the donor organ recognize the recipient cells as foreign and attack and destroy the recipient cells. The MHC locus was discovered in the early 1950s. Human leukocyte antigens are divided into three classes, class 1, class 2, and class 3. The MHC locus includes genes other than those that code for human leukocyte antigens. Cytokine genes and genes encoding tumor necrosis factor alpha and tumor necrosis factor beta are located inside of the main HLA complex. So here is the schematic showing the MHC locus, which is located on chromosome 6. The MHC locus covers approximately 4 megabases of DNA, depending on the individual. Class 1 genes are 3 to 6 kilobases long, and class 2 genes are 4 to 11 kilobases in length. Tumor necrosis factor alpha and beta are not part of the polymorphic HLA system. The gene products of the MHC are present in different amounts in different tissues. Class 1 and 2 are the strongest antigens expressed on cells. Class 1 molecules are expressed on all nucleated cells, and Class 2 molecules are expressed on professional antigen presenting cells. Here is a table showing the location, function, gene product, and MHC region of the genes of the MHC locus. So the class 1 molecules. Class 1 molecules consist of a long or heavy chain of 346 amino acids associated with a smaller peptide, the beta 2 microglobulin, which is 99 amino acids and is not encoded in the MHC. The class 1 heavy chain displays short branch chain sugars, making the molecule a glycoprotein. The heavy chain is also a transmembrane polypeptide that anchors the complex at the cell surface. The class II molecules consist of two transmembrane polypeptides, an alpha chain with three domains, alpha 1, 2, and 3, and a beta chain with two domains, beta 1 and beta 2. The two polypeptides associate and form a groove that will hold fragments of antigen that have been engulfed and processed by the cell. The human leukocyte antigens are membrane proteins that are responsible for rejection of transplanted organs and tissues. Class II and Class I polypeptides are shown. Class 2 antigens consist of two chains, the alpha and the beta. Class 1 antigens consist of a heavy chain and a light chain associated together with a molecule of beta 2 microglobulin. Genes of the MHC are the most polymorphic genes of the human genome. 
the polymorphisms range from a single base pair to the loss or gain of entire genes. A particular sequence or version of an HLA gene is an allele of that gene. The HLA type is the collection of alleles detected by phenotype or genotypic typing methods. Each HLA gene can differ in sequence from each individual except for identical twins. So in this uh, slide you can see the human leukocyte antigens and you can see that there are polymorphisms located in the HLA sequences. So you can write these, the actual nucleotides, and you could see in, in pink or red the variations. Or you can just write the, the consensus sequence and then the lines mean that the nucleotide is the same and then where you see the actual red nucleotide that means that that's a difference at that location. So each sequence is a different allele. A set of particular alleles on the same chromosome is a haplotype. These alleles are inherited together as a block of chromosomal sequence. An HLA haplotype is the combination of polymorphic sequence or alleles in the HLA gene regions. Polymorphisms are concentrated in exons 2 and 3 of the class 1 genes and in exon 2 of the class 2 genes. Molecular methods target these exons in HLA-A, HLA-B, and HLA-C class 1 genes and mostly the HLA-DRB class 2 genes. A haplotype is the combination of alleles that are inherited together. So the parental genotypes on the top can produce four possible genotypes in the offspring shown at the bottom of this slide. There's a standard nomenclature that has been established by the World Health Organization or WHO Nomenclature Committee. So you have your gene region, the HLA, the gene locus, D, your subregion, your R, and then your alpha or beta chain polypeptide, the B1. Sometimes a small W is included in the HLA-C, HLA-B4, and HLA-B6 allele nomenclature, which would be written as HLA-CW, HLA-BW4, and HLA-BW6. Also, HLA typing at the DNA level requires nomenclature for specific DNA sequences. So again, you have your gene region, your gene locus and subregion, your alpha or beta chain polypeptide, and asterisks, and then you have your allele family and then the next allele. So in this case, the allele family 25 and the third allele. There are over 900 HLA alleles identified so far in all loci. The letter N following the specific allele number indicates a null allele or phenotypic absence of that antigen. Null alleles can result from deletions as well as nonsense, frame, sh frame shift, splice site, or other premature stop mutations that prevent amino acid translation. Silent mutations are also called synonymous changes, which are designated by a number following the specific allele number. Ambiguity is the recognition of two or more antigens by the same antibody so that the exact allele can't be called. And ambiguity, ambiguity is designated either by an I or a dash between the possible allele numbers. Every single person except for identical twins has different sets of HLA alleles. Transplanted organs are allografts in which the donor organ and the recipient are genetically different. 
So compatibility or matching of the HLA of the donor and the recipient increases the chance for a successful engraftment. Matching is determined by comparing alleles and resolution is the level of detail with which an allele is determined. So matching can be done through serological typing where you have lymphocytes that are HLA type by cross-matching to the panel reactive antibodies using the complement dependent cytotoxicity test. So cross-matching to known antibodies is performed on lymphocytes or the Buffy coat in a 96 well plate where each well contains different known antibodies. If the antibody matches the cellular antigen, you'll have a positive reaction. Then you'll get complement dependent cytotoxicity and the dead cells will take up the stain. If the antibody doesn't match the cellular antigen, then there's no cytotoxicity and the cell will not take up the stain. Recipient anti-human antibodies are assessed by cross-matching to donor lymphocytes. So you have lymphocytes from organ donor or lymphocytes of known HLA types and you mix those with the recipient serum. So a positive reaction to antibody is going to kill the cells and once again the dead cells are going to pick up the dye and stain a color. A negative reaction to the antibody will not kill the cells and live cells exclude the dye so live cells won't be stained. And this is shown here where you have both dead cells and live cells and dead cells are going to take up the stain and live cells are going to be clear. You can do serological based typing using bead arrays where you have recipient anti-human antibodies that are assessed by cross-matching to known lymphocyte antigens conjugated to microparticles and you uh, assess the results using flow cytometry. So you have beads that are conjugated to different lymphocyte antigens, you have serum antibodies, and you have fluorescent reporter anti antibodies. So if you have your antibodies recognizing, you're going to get attachment and you're going to see a reaction. Whereas if your antibodies are not being recognized by the antigen, then you are not going to be able to see the reaction. Ne it's going to be negative. Other serological typing methods include cytotoxic and non-cytotoxic methods with flow cytometry detection, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA with solubilized HLA antigens, mixed lymphocyte culture measuring growth of lymphocytes activated by cross-reactivity, and measure of HLA protein mobility differences in one-dimensional gel isoelectric focusing or two-dimensional gel electrophoresis. There are also DNA-based typing methods as opposed to the serological antibody antigen-based methods. So DNA typing focuses on the most polymorphic loci in the MHC, which is the HLA-B and the HLA-DRB. So whole blood patient specimens collected in anticoagulant are used for DNA typing. And cell lines of known HLA type are used for reference samples. So in sequence specific oligonucleotide probe hybridization, you have hybridization of labeled probe to immobilize amplicons of the HLA genes. And this is done as a dot blot. Separate membranes are produced for each probe to be used, and every membrane should include reference amplicons that are both complementary and non-complementary to all probes in the assay. The probes are very short, 19 to 20 bases that are single-stranded DNA chains designed to hybridize to specific HLA alleles. 
So here's a schematic of the SSOP method where you have your two different specimens, specimen one, specimen two, that are different types. You're going to amplify, denature, and spot onto your membranes. And then you're going to probe with your allele-specific probes onto your various membranes and then see what lights up, which would mean that you have hybridization between the probe and your amplicon. You can also do sequence-specific PCR, um, where you would take your sequence-specific primer to, that matches your allele, and you would also have a primer that does not match the allele. So if you get amplification, that means that you have allele-specific product. If you do not get amplification, it means that you did not have that allele sequence. You can also do SSP PCR in using um, gel electrophoresis where you have primers recognizing different alleles and this is done in a 96 well plate format. So you would have an, an agarose gel, you would have an amplification control, and you'd also have your reagent blank which is going to be your contamination control. You can also do sequence-based typing, which is very high resolution method, where polymorphic regions are amplified by polymerase chain reaction and then sequenced using a, 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 a sequencer to identify the exact nucleotides. So in your sequence-based typing, you would isolate your DNA. You would do PCR to amplify the DNA. You would then do a, a PCR cleanup to get your amplicons and remove all the primers and anything else that might inhibit your reaction. And then you're going to sequence your amplified product. And these sequences, the nucleotides, are going to be compared to reference or consensus sequence so that you can see where possible polymorphisms are occurring. DNA sequence changes don't always affect epitopes. Serology doesn't recognize every allele detectable by DNA. New antigens recognized by serology may be assigned to a previously identified parent allele by serological base typing. Serology antibodies may be cross-reactive for multiple alleles, and due to new allele discovery, retyping results may differ from typing performed before the new allele was known, and all of these can lead to typing discrepancies. So here are the resolution levels of HLA typing methods. So there are low resolution methods, your serological methods, and some of your PCR methods, your inter intermediate resolution, and your high resolution methods. So what's commonly done is combining typing, re um, typing methodologies to enhance resolution. So HLA polymorphisms differ, can differ, by as small as a single nucleotide base. Serological typing is not going to always distinguish these very subtle differences. The design of molecular methods determines their level of resolution. So depending on if you're using a low resolution or high resolution method is going to um, vary your results. So results from serological and DNA-based results can be combined to improve the resolution and further define the HLA types. So you can combine typing results doing something like your sequence-specific primer PCR followed by PCR RFLP or your SSOP followed by your SSP PCR. So you can combine various methods and increase your resolution. 
genetic diseases caused by single gene disorders obey Mendelian laws. So you get your dominant and your recessive disorders. However, most diseases aren't caused by a single gene and have very complex segregation patterns. And these complex diseases usually are um, multifactorial and polygenic. So they include multiple genes, not just one gene, and environmental factors also come into play. So these are things like heart disease and diabetes and a lot of genes where there's many different factors that play a role. Autoimmune diseases are complex disorders. At least one of the genetic factors involved in auto autoimmunity is linked to, to the MHC. Determination of a disease-associated HLA haplotype can aid in the diagnosis or prediction of autoimmune disease predisposition. So in summary, the M MHC is a polymorphic locus encoding the HLA genes. Antigens encoded by the HLA genes are responsible for allograft tissue and organ rejection. Identifying and matching alleles increases the chance of, su of successful organ and tissue transplant. HLA antigens and their corresponding sequence alleles are determined by serological and DNA-based methods. In serology, identifies functional antigen recognition, while sequence analysis identifies genetic alleles with high resolution.